very much. I appreciate it. Now for this week's episode of The Takeout, CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Major Garrett sat down with White House Legislative Affairs Director Mark Short. As a matter of policy and politics, will Republicans hold on to the House and the Senate in the midterm elections? Uh, I'm not as much of a prognosticator, Major. I think that... Uh, Are you anxious? There's a, I think, of course. I think that if you look at uh, historical trends, I think America typically likes divided government. So um, they could be pleased with the product so far, pleased with, with what they're seeing as far as the agenda that's been passed, yet still prefer a divided government. I don't think that that's it's an inconsistent argument. And so, um, so Are you yes. bracing for that? I don't know that you brace for. I think you you just you keep your head down and keep plowing through on the agenda, and that's what that's what we're trying to do. Major Garrett joins us now from the White House. Major Mark Short sounded uncertain that Republicans would hold on to both houses of Congress. What did you take away from that part of your conversation? Well, I think uncertain is being charitable. <laughs> when you talk about divided government, that sounds downright pessimistic to me. Divided government means one chamber, possibly both, in the hands of the opposition party. That's what divided government means. I must tell you, I was somewhat startled to hear Mark Short use that particular phrase. Oh, the American people may be satisfied with what we've accomplished, but they may prefer divided government. Wow. That means a check, a legitimate legislative check on the president's power and his agenda. And don't misconstrue one other part of what comes with divided government. Divided government means the opposition party not only can offer its legislative alternatives and have the votes to back them up, it also has oversight powers, subpoena powers that it exercises as the majority party, either in the House or Senate or possibly both. That's another reality that this administration would have to deal with should Democrats win control of the House and Senate. So when Mark Short talks about divided government, he is sort of conceptually introducing the notion of Democrats running a good deal of the legislative power structure in Washington after the midterm elections. Sounds pessimistic to me. Yeah, and you get a sense from Democrats that they are very much interested to investigate, to inquire about President Trump's behavior um, as president or even um, as a candidate. I want to quickly play a clip from your discussion yeah. about Chief of Staff John Kelly. Mark, I know he's still chief of staff, representations about a good working relationship with the president, but I do know from conversations with lots of people in and around the building, General Kelly's worn down by the job a little bit. He gets a little tired by the pace of it and the volatility of it. And there are those in the White House who believe he has lost some confidence in some sectors of the West Wing. Is that true? I don't think he's lost confidence. I think that uh, the uh, the job is very demanding, but I've also heard John Kelly on many occasions say that this is the most important job that he's ever had. And he's had some cre incredibly important right. What jobs. do you think he means by that? I think he knows that uh, the role he's serving in right now is uh, consequential to, uh, we're at a very pivotal time in American history, and it's consequential not just to the economy of our country, but also the national security of our country. So, Major, what did you make of, of Short's answer to you? Because, of course, Chief of Staff is an important job, but it is clear that he did not, uh, you know, signal that you should go away from or avoid focusing on the fact that this job serving President Trump specifically is tough. How did you read that? Well, as our conversation continued, I pressed Mark Short on this idea that there is, in stories written about people like General Kelly, the Chief of Staff, and others, this hero factor like if it weren't for me I the who knows what would happen under President Trump and that there needs to be this constant intervention this constant keeping him focused and on the rails Mark Short denied all that but he did say look the president is a disruptive force in Washington and he conceded within the Trump White House and that disruptive nature rubs a lot of people in Washington the wrong way and makes it difficult for those who work inside the White House to maintain a sense of equilibrium and balance. Now, that's the general context of what Mark Short said. Those are not direct quotes, but they're a fair right. representation of how he described the genuine atmosphere of working for President Trump. And I also asked Mark Short something that he probably wished I hadn't. Does he ever want to become chief of staff? Does he ever believe he'll replace General Kelly? Well, Mark Short said, no, he has no interest in that, wouldn't take the job, et cetera, et cetera. But his name has surfaced more than once as a possible replacement. 
And this idea that those who work most closely with the president at the chief of staff level and other senior advisors have a short shelf life has been proven out by those who have already left and by those deeply fatigued by the disruptive nature of not only the agenda, but the president's approach to trying to see that agenda come to fruition. Yeah, great conversation. More reasons to uh, tune in to Major's Takeout podcast here on CBSN or wherever you get your podcast. Major Garrett, great to chat with you. Thanks very much. Thanks so much. And of course, you can watch Major's full conversation with White House Legislative Affairs Director Mark Short on CBSN Friday and Saturday nights at 9 p.m.